Those stories shortly, but first we start this morning with North and South Korea. They've kicked off their first formal talks in more than two years. They brought together the sport to discuss how the North athletes can attend next month's Winter Olympics in South Korea, despite simmering tensions and fears of conflict between the two Asian neighbors. Vehicles transporting the South Korean delegation, led by Chu myung Gyeong, the minister of South Korea's unification ministry, drove past a checkpoint on the Grand Unification Bridge that leads to the truce, the village of Panmunjom, just south of the DMZ, the demilitarized zone that separates the north and the south. Five senior officials from each side met at the three-story peace off office on the South Korean side on the Panmunjom truce village. It started around 10 o'clock local time. The North Korean delegation walked over the border inside the joint security area to the Peace Air House. Since early 2016, though, South Korea had been making repeated attempts to hold talks with its neighbor. Seoul had been calling North Korea twice daily from a special hotline in the DMZ, which is a heavily guarded border that separates the two countries. Well, finally, last week, North Korea answered. Pyongyang also sent out a fax stating that its representatives would be traveling to the Peace House that is located on the South Korean side of Panmunjom for those talks. Well, the breakthrough came after the United States and South Korea agreed to delay the joint military exercises. Now, this is what North Korea considers a massive threat. The drill was delayed until after next month's Winter Olympics, which is being held in South Korea. Well, ahead of the talk, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, extended the deadline for the registration of the North Korean athletes for the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Only a figure skating pair from North Korea has secured a spot in the Games. Meanwhile, those who live in South Korea are a little upbeat about the sports diplomacy between the two countries. Now, they believe that the talks will be a precursor to many more bilateral talks in the near future. 1차적으로는 평창 올림픽을 안전하게 치르는 것이 중요하고 그 다음에는 좀더 나아가 가지고 어 사실은 뭐 여러 가지 그 국제 정세로 보면 굉장히 어려운 상황이지만은 그래도 어핵 문제를 일단 끄집어내어 가지고 일단 이야기를 시작할 수 있는 어 단초가 되지 않겠느냐 이번 회담이 스포츠 얘기를 통해서 평창 올림픽 때 남과 북이 만나서 우리가 전쟁 위협으로 또한 발자국부터 어, 어, 물어설 수 있는 그 어, 전쟁을 또 전쟁 위협을 방지할 수 있는 이런 기회가 되고. Well, the meeting is being closely watched by world leaders for any sign of a reduction in tension on the Korean peninsula amid rising fears over North Korea's development of nuclear weapons and the defiance of the United Nations Security Council resolutions. So, 呃, 我们也希望 国际社会所有有关各方都能够对这一积极动向给予支持，并且呢能够共同努力，找到缓解紧张、增进互信、恢复对话协商的好的办法。nella penisola coreana al fine di trovare nuove strade per superare le attuali contrapposizioni, accrescere la fiducia reciproca e assicurare un futuro di pace al popolo coreano e al mondo intero. To get more perspective on this, we're now joined by Weon Senior Editor Surya Gangadran joining us now live on the very latest. Surya, good morning to you. With regards to the talks between North and South Korea, certainly a crucial one, especially something that the United States is also going to be watching very closely. What do we expect to happen? Uh, is this a step in the right direction? 
Well, that's one of the um, funny things about this uh, this dialogue. Uh, it's uh, clear that they will discuss the forthcoming um, uh, Winter Olympics. But beyond that, it's not very clear what the North Koreans want, you know. What is it that they've come to talk about? Because obviously, when you're meeting after nearly three years, uh, it's an opportunity to look at all those other issues that are uh, that have remained unaddressed all this time. So, uh, exactly what are the North Koreans prepared to talk about is something we still don't know as yet. And uh, the South Koreans will also be a little wary because uh, uh, do remember that they are in an alliance with the U.S. And the U.S. is their sole guarantee of defense in the event of a North Korean invasion. So, there is uh, not very much they can uh, do or offer the North Koreans. Uh, if they are to keep that alliance with the U.S. intact. So a lot of dilemmas there, a lot of um, um, confusion as to exactly what the agenda will be. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how the talks progress. Surya, when it comes to North and South Korea, this is something that hasn't happened in a while. Certainly the Olympics uh, could be a focal point, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, but uh, uh, perhaps is there international pressure? Is this perhaps why Kim Jong-un is uh, uh, setting out the stage right now? Or is this really just a farce? Because uh, previously we've seen North Korea really doesn't pay too much heed to what uh, world leaders, Western powers, or even the UN Security Council has to say. Is this perhaps just a, a show of force to say that, hey, we are trying, but... Uh, not, uh, or is it just too early to tell at this point? No, the North Koreans have been under sanctions for many, many years. And um, I think uh, since they're continuing to receive perhaps some kind of fuel supplies from China and perhaps from some other countries, they're in a position to continue. But uh, clearly there may be a realization within that uh, they need to take a step forward and try and end the situation which is why they reached out to South Korea, clearly in an attempt to uh, widen the gap between them and the U.S. Uh, whether that will work, um, not clear, it may not. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the North Koreans are under some kind of pressure, but not under the kind of pressure which will make them give up their nuclear weapons. That they will not do. What they want is a, dialogue, a direct dialogue with the U.S. Uh, President Trump has indicated that he's prepared to talk to the North Korean leader on the phone, Maybe there's some uh, ground there for um, a broader dialogue involving the U.S. All right. Uh, let's also bring in a former CIA intelligence officer, Glenn Carl, joining us now live from Massachusetts in the United States. Uh, Glenn, thanks so much for joining us. It's been about uh, two hours now since the uh, meeting has taken place in Seoul. It started around 10 o'clock local time there. When it comes to the discussions on the table, inter-Korean relations, the participation in the upcoming Winter Olympic Games are on the agenda. What do we expect to happen, though, in the days and the weeks ahead? Is this a step in the right direction, or is this just perhaps uh, North Korea trying to play its diplomatic cards well? Glenn? Well, I think, it, yes, thanks for having me and I to chat with you. I, I think that it's a, a good move by the South Koreans and the North, actually, uh, from their national perspectives, and, and even it probably serves the uh, U.S. objectives, because I don't really believe the U.S. Uh, wants uh, a war, uh, although the U.S. has boxed itself in with uh, rather dramatic statements by Donald Trump. So this serves uh, for the North Koreans to, uh, just as our colleague a moment ago said, to draw out a bit of a wedge between South Korea, which um, whose prime minister is, is keen to have, or a strong supporter of, uh, of talking to the North, uh, and with the United States, which has taken a, a, a rather intransigent position, no nuclear weapons or no for the North or no person talks. Um, so I think it's a smart move. I, I also think that the the variable in the equation has really been uh, Donald Trump. North Korea has been quite consistent, and I, I'm no fan of North Korea, but uh, their nuclear weapons program, the missile program, is uh, a way to have national pride. But to keep uh, their national uh, independence from Ameri potential American invasion. And uh, that's, they are succeeding in that. And Glenn, you know, interestingly, on a, the, on New Year's Day uh, last week, uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong Un, uh, uh, perhaps surprisingly, took to more of a conciliatory note uh, when it came to uh, peaceful resolutions with the South. I mean, uh, what is the equation there? I mean, certainly knowing that the United States uh, and South Korea conducting their drills are allies, uh, is this perhaps a, a move by Kim Jong Un to provoke U.S. President Donald Trump uh, to maybe build an ally in South Korea? I mean, uh, uh, are we reading too much into this? 
No, I, I think it was. Uh, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because it was uh, by uh, the North Koreans a a, a, a softer uh, position, and it did give an opening for the negotiations with talk, the talk we're seeing now and seeing now in a, a reduction in tensions. It was only Donald Trump, really, who reacted uh, with um, a Manichaean, uh, childish and churlish tweet, of course. Um, so it, it seemed to me, that statement, to signal the, a consistent North Korean policy, which is that they will not, under any circumstances, give up their uh, weapons, nuclear weapons and missile programs. And they seek national independence at the minimum. Uh, now, whether they have more devious uh, objectives and unification on terms that uh, the South itself would uh, want, and to, uh, at the same time, to uh, drive such a wedge between the South and the United States that the United States can be maneuvered out of South Korea is, is also possible. Uh, but they, um, to me, have played a, uh, an astute hand here in the last... Uh, last week or so, and uh, we're seeing the, the talks, and, and the South is open to reducing tensions. Absolutely. Certainly uh, the world is watching, and certainly U.S. President Donald Trump eager to find out how those talks uh, unfolded between North and South Korea. Glenn Carl joining us from the United States, and Surya Gangadharan, thanks for chiming in on this topic. Well, the both sides are still being represented by a five-member delegation specializing in inter-Korean issues. The DPRK delegation is being led by Ri song Won, who is the chairman of the Committee for the Peaceful Reunification of the Fatherland, which handles relations with South Korea. Ri is known as a close associate of the Senior Workers' Party official Kim Yong-chol, who Seoul believes was the mastermind of the two attacks back in 2010 that killed 50 South Koreans. And while the unification minister, Cho myung Gyon is leading the South Korean delegation, he's already said that he hopes the two countries will discuss issues of mutual interest for the improvement of inter-Korean ties and officials in charge of the Olympics. Well, officials from both the uh, North and the South, when it comes to the sports committee, are also taking part in those talks. Well, with a history of provocation, the two Korean countries would be looking to placate each other and ease the fear of a potential or a possible war. Now, while the talks will largely focus on North Korea's participation, as we mentioned in the upcoming Winter Olympic Games in South Korea, the two sides certainly are going to also raise other issues that pertain to their own interest in their own backyard. Well, first up, South Korea's Moon Jae-in's government wants North Korea to participate in the games and certainly hopes to diffuse attention with its longtime rival. South Korea, though, may suggest that athletes from both the countries parade together during the opening and the closing ceremonies. In fact, they may even file a joint women's ice hockey team. While well, the symbolic gesture is expected to get widespread attention after a year of heightened nuclear tensions in the Korean Peninsula. <laughs> North Korea is weak in winter sports and thus needs an additional quote to compete. Well, according to reports, North Korea's International Olympic Committee is in Switzerland to discuss the issue. South Korea is also expected to ask the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, to allow North Korea to attend the Games. Well, another issue besides the sporting aspect of it that may come up during the discussions is that South Korea plans to resume the uh, temporary reunions of families that were separated by war and work out measures to reduce threats in the border areas. North Korea may demand some rewards in exchange for those steps. Pyongyang, in the meantime, may ask for a revival of stalled cooperation projects that are beneficial for North Korea or the suspension of what North Korea dreads, the annual U.S. and South Korean military drills. North Korea sees this as a rehearsal for an invasion well, this may certainly become a point of contention as South Korea cannot accept the suspension of the drills considering its relations with the U.S. An agreement between the two countries to revive a jointly run industrial park or a tourism project may also draw criticism from other countries because this may violate U.N. sanctions and as a result could cause South Korean money being sent to North Korea.
Well, North Korea and South Korea are certainly conducting talks. It's been a few hours now since those talks unfolded in the DMZ in Seoul. Well, after a gap of nearly three years, the South Koreans are now hopeful that North Korea will take part in the upcoming Winter Olympic Games, which are next month in Pyeongchang in South Korea. Weon's Manish Shukla explains. On Tuesday, for the first time since December 2015, the two Koreas will sit down for talks in the truce village of Panmunjom. There are a couple of hitches though. It's not clear what the North expects from the talks and at all costs, the South does not want to do anything that would divide it from the overall US strategy. But if all goes well, a North Korean delegation could be part of the Winter Olympics to be held in Pyeongchang, South Korea next month. Weon was at Panmunjom on the demilitarized zone where the threat of war still looms large over the region. The threat stems from North Korea's unpredictable leader and its forces massed just across the demilitarized zone, but the South is on the alert. South Korea has around 2,500 tanks and the troops are stationed at the border, so that if they need to mount a military response, they can enter North Korea without wasting any time. South Korea has substantially built up its own forces, and Weon gives you a sneak peek into how Seoul, in the last six decades, has ensured it will be able to manage the military threat from North Korea. We are with the South Korean army. These are the Black Panthers. They are part of the mechanized units. Whenever the situation is tense at the border, the Black Panthers are pressed into service. K-2 and K-21 tanks are the main weapons of South Korea. South Korea, of course, is looking beyond the North's participation in the Winter Olympics. Through these talks, South Korea intends to reduce tensions on the peninsula and reunite families separated by the Korean War. The larger hope of reuniting the Koreas is too distant to contemplate. With Mani Shukla, Bureau Report, we are. The United States has blocked military aid to Pakistan last week. Now it has given a list of demands to Pakistan if they want America's financial help. The Pentagon announced that they would want Pakistan to stop being a safe haven for terrorists. U.S. officials believe that Pakistan's ISI, the Inter-Services Intelligence Agency, and other military bodies help fund and arm groups like the Taliban. Pakistan has denied this charge. Last week, U.S. President Donald Trump froze payments to Pakistan worth around $900 million, saying that Pakistan is simply not doing enough to target Afghanistan's Taliban and Haqqani group bases. The United States has said that the suspension of funding is not permanent and that the money was not being diverted elsewhere.